way, folks, that guy flies RC. Come back to you from the Grand Cave. Big shout out for Hobby Zone for sending me out the uh, Husky Ultimate for uh, review. And we've already watched the unboxing in the build video or the assembly. And now we're going to start with radio setup. Now, with radio setup, I also include hooking up any um, control services that are didn't already come hooked up from the factory. In this case, it is the elevator and the rudder because the distinction here is that you need to bind your radio, your aircraft to your radio, and then turn the radio, turn the motor or the model on, and then that will automatically center your servos, and then you can, it just makes it easier to proceed. Now, I, so I choose to um, do that uh, as part of the radio setup video. Now. There are some things that do not are not covered in the manual that you have to figure out on your own. One, okay, on the vector system. Let me hopefully you can see this. Okay, on that vector system, let me get everything off the side here. I'm going to use the prop. Okay. All right, you see your vector here. On this left side of the vector is this small Y with the yellow side up. You need to go back there and pull that Y out. It's just hooked in there just to have just to secure it. Because that actually that port doesn't do anything. Okay on, on the vector. That's just an S bus for a different uh, type of system. But you don't need to worry about that. You just pull that I've already verified this how this is. You take that Y out. Okay, now, in that little bag of goodies comes a Y, okay, a, 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 a longer Y, and it is labeled flap, okay? So, and remember I told you that there's two wires that come from your wings that are labeled or flaps? You're going to want to grab those, and you're going to install each of those fl labeled flaps into this labeled flap Y lead, and you line it up by yellow to yellow, light to light, dark to dark. That's how you always hook up servos, no matter what. So you're going to use the flap Y and attach it to the flap uh, y, servo leads that are coming out of the wings that are labeled. Now, this other little Y that I told you to pull out of the back of the vector system, that's what you control, that's what power your lights. Okay, now the, and it's just like anything else, light to light, dark to dark. In this case, you have, you say, well, wait a minute, there's three wires on your Y and only two on the light lead, okay? Well, you'll notice that there's a black and a red. So, remember, light to light, dark to dark. So, therefore, you have the negative part down here at the very bottom of this servo Y, Y connector. So, then you would line up the black or the dark wire of this light wire. Of the, of the light, the, the wire that controls the lights, the black will line up with the black on the servo lead and it will plug in. And it will see, if you see against that white there, you're going to have that gap there. See that gap right there above my thumb? See that gap? All right, that's going to, it's going to just, hope you can see that. See, there's a gap there. In other words, there's three, three wires could go into this servo lead, this Y. But it said only two, and the black is going to go at the bottom, lining up with the dark or the black uh, part of the servo or the Y. Now, this flap and the lights do not plug, have anything to do with the vector. These are going to go directly to your receiver. The lights only need power. So you can plug it into any open port. You can put it into your bind port. It just needs to have power. The flap will go into channel six. Gear on, on a um, spectrum receiver, channel five is always gear, channel six is always flap, okay? I'm gonna be using an AR620. So, looking on the AR620, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this, okay. But down here is channel five and channel six. I don't have gear, I have fixed gear. So, on well, I'll show you just a minute. Channel 6 there, the very bottom channel down there. Let the camera focus. Channel 6, that very bottom where my, my thumb is wiggling. Okay. 
that's where I'm going to plug in the flat channel. I'm going to leave channel 5 purposely open. Okay? If you look on the model, everything coming out of the front of the vector that was coming this way towards the front of the plane is labeled. Okay? And what you have, if you have rudder, you have throttle, you have elevator, aileron, and S bus. You got a total of five. That S bus is what I'm going to put into that channel five. Okay? So, I'm going to grab my, and you got throttle. Okay. On a spectrum receiver, all spectrum receivers are always a, all this way. You have channel zero, which is your bind port, or you can use it for power. Channel one is always throttle. Channel two is always aileron. Channel three is always elevator. Channel four is always rudder. Channel five is gear. Channel six is aux, aux one. Okay? So, what you use for flaps in this case. Alright, so I'm going to grab my throttle. I always plug throttle in first, and, and just like you know, your servo leads, the light side of the wire, the polarity is the light side. If you can see the spectrum logo, that is the side up that the light side of that servo lead is going to plug into. Let me plug in the throttle so I can show you what I'm talking about. Channel one there, and plug that in. I've done nothing with my transmitter. I have not set up a profile yet. We're going to show you how to do that. But let me show you what I meant by the polarity, how you can tell which way to put the servo lead in. I can see the spectrum logo. So therefore, I should see the, see where my thumb is? I should see the light side of that servo lead plugging in that way. And you're going to follow suit with everything else, okay? So next I'm going to find my aileron, and I'm going to plug that one in. Okay. I'm going to find my elevator. Think of it as uh, T-A-E-R, uh, T-R, or however you want to say that, as an acronym. And the rudder will be last as far as the main controls. Okay. I'm going to I don't have retracts, so therefore I'm going to grab that S bus. Okay. And put it in there. Then I'm going to grab the flap. Okay. Put that in there. Light side up. And then I'm going to grab my light uh, lead that's controlling my lights. It's just giving power through the bind port. So at the end of the day, as far as plugging in your receiver, it should look, on an AR620, it should look like that. Everything, every single opening is filled, okay, even the bind one, because that's where you're going to power your lights. Now, the whole front of this battery bay is battery, right? So, that means I want to keep, and I know my ESC is down underneath here. I want to keep my receiver as far away from carbon fiber spar and batteries as I can get it. I want to get it to where it's just kind of like up against bare foam. So I'm going to put it, I'm going to take it and I'm going to, bound, I'm going to uh, mount it right back here on the back of that wooden tray, almost in the center. The rule of thumb is always try to get your, your receiver mounted as close to the center of gravity on a plane as you can get it. That's just always been worked out good for me. I've never had I've never had a brown out per se or a loss of signal per se. Um, I've had receivers go bad and I've had servos go bad, but I've never actually never not not been able to control the plane. I um you know I say that I have had a signal interruption from power lines, and it wasn't mine, it uh, took down my F-16 years ago. Alright, I like to use Gorilla two-sided tape. I'm going to mount this in here, and I will show you what it looks like. With that Gorilla double-sided tape, it will hold, hold, 
tape's good to go now, but um, there's where I had that mounted now. There's the vector on this side, and then on the other side is the AR620, and she is in there. Okay. Everything is hooked up electronically. Okay? Everything's hooked up. Notice I don't have my prop on. Got my XT60. And this is kind of unusual for a 6S capable bird to have an XT60. So if you have 6S battery, you know, like a th this is a 3500. Um, the plane recommends a, a 3300, but this is a 35. I'm going to use it. It's one of the few um, 6 cell batteries that has an XT60, but you can always buy adapters. Um, if you've got a bunch of three or four 6 cells that are, you know, 4000 or a 3300 that will fit in here. And uh, but you've got EC5 or XT90s, then you'll have to get you an adapter that goes into an XT60. So know that before you buy this plane. It's a minor deal. You're talking about a one or two, you know, two or three dollar item. You probably have to buy a couple of them, so it might be more. Um, but there'll be other. You know, you bring two batteries out that have. Um, you know, you'll need extra adapters. Velcro is always in, already installed. Me, it's always I've always gone with the fuzzies, fuzzy side on the battery and the hard prickly side in the plane. That's just uh, how I like to do it. It's how I've always done it. So, I don't know if that's going to be the CG spot, but that's where I'm going to mount it for now. Uh, actually, up in there. And I'm not going to plug in my, my airplane yet. What we're going to do is we're going to create a model. Let me go ahead and turn. Now, with a spectrum transmitter, the more models you have on it, the longer it will take to uh, boot up. So let's get this camera moved a little bit better so you can see more about what I'm doing and I can see on the camera okay so we got our plane in front of us okay I'm going to go down here and I am going to add a model yes create a new model that's why I went to that screen okay it's got to think about that for just a second all right we're going to model type okay obviously it's going to be an airplane Yes. Okay. Model name. Let's go ahead. We're going to name it A R R O W S space H. This is what takes so long, things like this, but it's just part of it. U S K Y space and I'm just going to put U L T for ultimate U L T all right and then you can go back arrows husky ultimate back okay Aircraft type. Now this is important. Remember we had a Y a Y lead coming out for those flaps, right? You also had that Y lead coming out for the ailerons. Okay? Oh, that's something else I gotta tell you. So therefore you've got one signal for aileron, one signal for flaps. So in essence, it's one aileron, one way one aileron and one flap. Okay? Now from here, you can go ahead and click this image. Go down to standard image, and then just start finding yourself something you think, yeah, that's, that's, that's it, then back. Now, before you go anywhere else, go to channel assign, okay? Remember we're talking about that S bus. All right, gear 
is where that S bus is plugged in at, right? Okay. We want to change that. We want to put that on a three position switch. I like using B. So I'm going to change that to B. Okay. That way my gear channel, which normally would be on A, is now being controlled on my B switch, a three position switch. And looky there. Aux 1, it says, that, see how it says it's NA? That because I've already told the, the radio that it has a flap. So it takes, it takes Aux 1, so to speak, you know, it's kind of like on or, or is, is not available right now. So let's take that. Let's get that out of there. Get that and make that in here. We'll take aux 2. I like to make sure it's inhibited. That's just me, but looky here. Okay. Aux 2 is aux 2. Gear. I want to change that. Okay. I want... Hold on. Maybe telling you all wrong. All right, we'll change that to aux two. The back channel side, aux two is going to be B, okay, and gear. Let's see what I got here. Gear is going to be B. Aux 2 is going to be assigned as B. Next, next, next. Oh, and now, before we go any further than this, there are throttle cut. I like using H. I like that uh, H up there. All you got to do is highlight it and flip the switch. I now have a throttle cut. Even though I don't have the... the even though I don't have... A prop on. I like having that throttle cut. So let's set the camera back just a touch. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to grab my radio, my battery lead, and my ESC lead. Plug in the model. I'm going to reach down there to that XT to that uh, AR620, and I'm going to press in on that bind button. See how she's flashing. Okay. Then I want to go to my transmitter. Okay. And yes, I know she's used to flashing waiting on me. Go to my transmitter. And I'm going to bind. Yes. Binding. Ah. All right. So now, look, when I hit the ailerons, the ailerons move. Don't have the, the uh, flaps set up yet, so they're not going to do anything because I haven't assigned to a switch. But I can see back there that my elevator servo is trying to do something. And I can hear, and I can see that elevator servo trying to uh, work. So let's go ahead. While we're here, and let's hook those two items up. I know I got my lights on, right? Because I just saw them. So I know the lights are getting the power like they're supposed to. Let's back up the camera here just a touch more. Okay. All right. Looky here. Okay. That is my elevator. Right over here, I'm sorry. All right, now, to hook that up, I've already got that servo centered. It calls for the rudder and the elevator to be hooked into the second hole on the control arm of the servo. Now, I'm not doing that. I'm doing it on the outer hole because that gives me the most throw. I like the most amount of, the most amount of controls I can get. I am a control freak. Push that through there, turn it just a touch, and I'm going to hold, you see what I'm doing? I'm holding that elevator level, and then I'm going to rest that ball link right there. And if it rests right on there, and I notice that my elevator's pretty trim, it's not quite, okay? It's going to, the elevator's gonna come down just a touch. 
So therefore, I'm going to need to push this out. I'm going to turn the elevator this left a little bit, or loosen it, and now it's trimmed. So now I can pop that on there. And I have a what you call a ball link tool, which makes this a whole lot easier. All right. So now, oh no, it didn't. Get the on it. Sorry, I got my head in your way, in your face. Okay. Now my elevator is popped on there. All right, I'm gonna take the rudder, and I'm gonna push it on the outer hole here. Fish that in there. Okay. Because I like the most amount of control. And I'm gonna lay the ball link, just lay it on there. I'm going to hold the top of the rudder, because if you see right here, you have the structure, I'm going to put my finger up to hold that rudder in place, and then I'm going to place the ball link, the end of the uh, push rod, on the end of that ball link, and if it seem, if I push it on there, it's kind of turning my rudder that way a little bit, so I need to pull it in, so I'm going to turn to the right a little bit, put, I'm going to place it back on there, and if I push it on there, does it turn my rudder at all? No, that does not turn my rudder. So, that should be trim. Well, maybe. Sometimes this, this tool doesn't help me at all. Sometimes it's better just to use a good old pair of needle nose and your fingers and just get it on there. There we go. There we go. And it's good to hear that satisfying click. Now, you get to where you can see it. So you can see. Everything's nice. Good thing I had that prop on because I just barely hit it. Okay. As you can see, see how, see the top of the elevator? See the sections there? How that, sorry about that, my uh, camera cut out on me. But as you can see, ailerons work. Elevator's nice and flush. Trim, so is the rudder. Everything lines up nice and straight. Now, if you, if you attach your push rod, your control rod, whatever you want to call it, and it doesn't line up, and when you hook it up, one control surface is slightly off, just move that clevis, uh, the, the round part, in or out until when you attach it, everything is perfectly trimmed. Okay? And if you look, look at the end of the aileron, it's perfectly lined up. And it's on either side. So I know that my ailerons are perfectly trimmed. So now let's turn our attention to flaps. Now there's no flaps settings in the book that I can tell. It just kind of tells you give give yourself high and low rate. Okay. Let's go in here. Let's go to flap system. Okay. I like using channel D, which is traditional. Okay. So Right now, there's no settings. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the speed. I've been liking, a lot of people use two, two seconds. I'm going to use three seconds. Okay, for flaps up, position zero. Okay, put it in position zero. I'm going to try going negative. And if and I'm going, see, I'm going negative on it. See how it's going negative? Watch the flaps. Here's how they're starting to go. All right, so I'm all the way negative. 100%. Okay, so let's go down. Alright, and look, flaps are going down because I'm at a positive 100%. I think, honestly, to get this plane to take off, I'm going to need more. I'm going to need more than just that much. So let's make this a positive 50. Okay, and then for 
takeoff or for landing flaps, we're going to make this a positive 100. Now, what I love the percentages, the, the, the flapped elevator mix I like to use on high wing planes just as a starting point is I usually do 11% down elevator for takeoff and then 22% down elevator for landing. That's just so you see that now. Okay, now. You can see the flaps. Okay, you can see the flaps on the screen. All right, I'm going to move this to landing flaps. All right, that's on the flap system. How that looks on a spectrum, it's a hundred per, it's a hundred percent down with a 22% down elevator mix. That's just what I'm going to start with to show you. Uh, well, let me show you on the screen. Those are pretty long flaps. Look at that. Look at that elevator up there. Okay. Now, put the flaps all the way up. If you notice, my elevator is going back to neutral position. Flaps are neutral. Take off. If you look, the elevator just going down just ever so much. That's just eleven percent down. And then landing flaps. They're, they're down quite a bit, and you got a little bit of deflection. All right. Now, these, these are very long flaps. There's a lot of area here, a lot of surface area. So we'll start with that and go from there. Okay. Now, let's address. Remember we had that, that S bus thing? Okay. All right. Remember we had the S bus where you the uh, different levels? I put that on B. Ah, I just heard movement. I put it in the zero position, the furthest position away. I don't know if you noticed it or not. Or you heard it. Look at my elevator. What did my elevator just do? Alright, I take it on the next position. The elevator goes back to neutral. And then I go lower the position closest to me, which should be um, that AS3X or optimizer or our dynamic. Okay. So let's see. Let's see if I hear. Can you kind of hear that? You hear gyros? All right. I can hear the gyros. You may not be able to hear it, but I can hear the gyros. Now, to know if a gyro is working correctly. All right. Look at that rudder. If I go this way, that rudder should turn slightly that way, and it does, okay? And if I go the other direction, that rudder should turn towards that. If I pull up on the elevator, the elevator should turn towards the upward movement, and it does. Now, some of these systems, especially like with the jets, and they have this kind of uh, gyros uh, type settings, it's almost indistinguishable to the neck and eye, but it's very, it's very distinct in the air. So if you really can't tell, I haven't tested the other one, I'm going to put my hand on the aileron. As I move the wing up, that aileron should turn towards my hand, and it does. The elevator should turn towards my hand, and it does. The rudder should go towards my hand, should go towards the movement. So now I know that my gyro is set up right. Let's take a look. Put that on the open, the zero position on the on the on the uh, stability mode, and let's see if this plane tries itself right. Look at that aileron. What's it doing? It's kicking up. So what would that do? If it stays in that position, it would turn the plane back down. Okay. Look at the elevator. Okay. As I put the elevator up, what's it doing? It's kicking up, right, and it's holding position. So what would that do in flight? It would level the airplane. So now I know that my safe position is right. I know that my safe is working. My, my um, what they call stability mode, I know it's working. I know that my um, dynamic mode or optimized mode is working for a wind gyro. And then I also know if I put that position, I put all the way at the bottom or there's nothing, Okay, or in this case, it's the middle. 
Okay, nothing's happened. So that middle position is no gyro. So if I choose to turn that gyro off, and this is just the way that the vector system interprets um, my, my radio. So I pick B. It's important that you pick a three position switch. So I know furthest away, because I'm holding the transparent line, furthest away from me is going to be safe. The middle position is going to be no gyro, no, no help at all, and the, close, the one closest to me is going to be their optimized or dynamic mode, or actually I keep saying it wrong because this is the older, it is a dynamic mode which is optimized or AS3X. So that's probably where I'm going to be leaving it. All right, now let's go over, let me get to where you can see the control surfaces again. Okay, I'm oh, sorry earlier, the camera cut out. And position in such a way to where you can see all the control surfaces and you can see what I'm doing. Okay. Okay. And I can see the camera. Sorry. <laughs> Trying to film and have limited space. Let's go in here and set up rates and expo. Okay. Now, I like using um, my G, my G switch right here. Okay. Um, I use H for throttle cut, which is here, and I like using G for my rates. Um, but I'm, only gonna, I'm actually only going to use one rate, okay? I'm just letting you know. Well, we'll set up low rate. We'll do it so that way you can see how to do it. First thing you're going to want to do is select your switch. I like using G, okay? So I put it on G. Then I'm going to go up. I like for my high rates, see, I'm holding the transmitter like this. So... The switch going up to me is the highest position, so that's my high rate. So I would choose it closest to me. So for my high rate, I'm going to choose 100% throws with 30% expo. Okay. Now I'm going to take the switch and I'm going to move it to the next position down. Okay. And I'm going to change that to 70%. Using my roller with 30% expo. Okay, now when I go to elevator, you got to pick the switch first. I'm going to go to G, go back to my highest position, 100% throws, 30% expo. Okay, I'm going to push it down to the middle position, change it to 70. over 30 okay and now I'm going to go to elevator or rudder I'm sorry you got to pick the switch go to G okay go to my highest setting or the closest to me 100% 30% expo Go to my low rate or my middle position. Oh, go back to high. Get that down. Now I go to my middle position. Okay. Uh oh, that's on F. That needs to be on G. Okay, so let's go back to high. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Gotta stay on G. Gotta stay on G. Now I'm trying to hold this transmitter and look at the screen at the same time. Okay. Alright, so high is that. I'm going to go to middle position for the rudder. I'm going to change the down to 70 for my low rate. There's a delay in what I see on the screen and what's happening in the transmitter. Change that to 30. All right. So, you see the screen. See? Let me just... Get you out of here. Put this over here. That way you can see everything that's going on. All right. Remember my high position was 100% throws over 30% expo. And that's what it looks like on either ones. That's what it looks like on the elevator. That's what it looks like on the rudder. Okay? But looky here. 
Look at my other one. When I go right aileron, it goes the wrong direction. And that's, that's going to happen. So let's show you how to fix that. How you fix that. Okay. We're going to go to Servo Setup. Travel. Reverse. Aileron. All right, now watch that aileron over there. Up, down. All right, so everything's correct. Everything's moving the right way. But let's make sure that did not interfere with a gyro. Okay? We go back to the safe position on the gyro or stabilize mode. And look, the computer knows better. It automatically has that. See the elevator going up and holding position. Look at this aileron over here going up, holding position. Okay. So now we've established rates. We've established flaps. We've established that I'm a, that I'm a nut. We've established um, how the how the gyro works. Okay. Let's do one last thing before we wrap up this video. And this one last thing is the most important step. And then, well, uh-oh, we just realized you can't see me. So let me turn the camera a little bit. Now we're going to go over the most important step of any airplane setup, no matter what. And that is CG. Okay? When, if, if you have the CG right and you have enough lift, you can make a brick fly. Okay, I'm going to leave that battery where I had it. What you need to do to determine your CG, you're going to need a ruler, you're going to need what the manual says it is, and you're going to need a Sharpie or some sort of marker or some way of making an indentation on the wing. Okay, because you got to find it. According to the manual, the CG on this plane is 80 to 90 millimeters back from the leading edge, the front edge of the wing. All right. So I'm going to take my ruler. I'm going to take my sharpie. Okay, and I'm going to turn the model over. Okay. All right. Grab the model. Get the model turned over. This is a big plane. Okay. I got a lot of other parts of planes hanging out. So I turn them all over. Get it where I can work on it. Okay. Oh, I know you're in the optimized or self-level mode. All right. So what you're going to do? You know it's 80 to 90. You're going to find the leading edge, the front of your wing. Get your millimeter side. Lay your ruler down. Put it on the, the nine. Drop your Sharpie. Always drop the Sharpie at least once. Okay. We'll put the nine for 90 right on the leading edge of that wing. I'm going to find my zero on the ruler and make a, a circle on the wing. I'm going to pull it out to the eight for the 80. Make another dot, little black circle on the wing. All right, I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. Put my nine on the leading edge of the wing, find my zero, put a dot. Pull out to the eight, find my zero, and make me a dot on the wing. Now, that is how I mark the CG on the plane. So, to show you, what that looks like and to give you a reference point where you don't have to mark anything up okay if you look right there you see them two dots but if you look immediately to the left of that you see there's two fill points there's two uh indentations in the wing there where foam got filled and you can see the spar going through that cg is perfectly on that fill mark same thing on the other side. So, let's see 
how she CGs. Now I'm going to have to put, put my fingers there. I'm going to put my fingers there. And she seems pretty good, but I need to, I know for safety's sake, I need to put the prop on. So we're going to remove the, we're going to unplug the battery. Don't have to have the battery plugged in for this step. Okay. But I want this prop on there because I want to know, you know, I want to know because the way the prop does include in that, I got to make sure that as she's fully loaded and everything, you know, loaded for bear, that everything would be flying is on the plane as she would fly. So from this point on, I don't really have to have any power to the plane. All right, remember that is a wood. Oh, and by the way, off camera, I checked the balance of the, using a DeBros um, a prop balancer, spot on. Absolutely, perfectly balanced. Um, so I don't have to worry about that. All right, you use one of the smaller. Now, you, you have to use one of them smaller 16 millimeter screws to uh, attach the prop. Well, I didn't have an extra one. I didn't have another one. So if you look on, on the underside of the fuselage, you have three screws holding a, a plastic doubler in for um, float, the float attachment. I use one of them screws. All right. Oh, boy, that is like... That can't be right. That's like rubbing. Hmm. The spinner. My spinner is actually. You know what? I think I tightened. I think I tightened that prop on too much. And it's warping the plastic spinner. This is where I, I wish it had a. I wish it had a uh, metal spinner. Yeah, see, that's not... Okay, so that's fine. I'm surprised that this plastic spinner has that much influence on that. Oh, okay, because you're pressing on the end. All right. When it attaches, as soon as, as, soon as it touches into the, in the plastic, when both pieces of this uh, spinner touch, they... Lock in, don't press any harder, don't screw it any harder than that. Just enough to get it snug, snug in there. Okay? Because you want you want the whole the whole spinner to move freely. Okay. Yeah, and that's on there. Okay. Alright, so now let's check CG. To show you where, remember I took that 3500 3, uh, 6S and I've got it shoved in there. It's not up against the back of the motor, but I've got it in. You know what? Let's make sure. I want to make sure it's not touching. Okay. Let me get my finger in there. All right. You know what? That's what I'm going to do. Because you can touch the back of the motor. Yeah. So you don't want your battery touching it. The back of the motor because that just cause friction and cause a battery fire just not good so just barely put the front of the battery in there not enough where it's going to touch that motor wooden tray. Just barely hiding underneath the top of that battery compartment there. I'll show you in just a second what I'm talking about. Okay. I just barely got the front of this battery tucked underneath the wheel well. But not not so far in there to where it would actually rub on the battery. So let's try the CG there. Battery loaded, prop is on. Put your fingers on your spots. Okay, 
Now, I like the way that looks. However, if that's all you got, that's all you got. I prefer to rely on a CG. Um, Great Plains used to make one. They don't make them anymore. So if you find one at a swap meet, grab it. Um, Hobby King will sell their CG machine in the American Warehouse about once a year for like three days. So check Hobby King all the time. And then whenever they grab, you see this, grab it. $14.95 and it's an invaluable tool. I'm sure there are other companies that make more, more in-depth, more nice looking CG machines. But this one works just fine for me. Find my marks. I let you know it. The struts are going to be in the way. Okay, let's try it this way. And now my wheels. Ha! I can't, I can't believe it. Here I'm making this big deal about the CG machine. And I can't even use it because everything gets in the way. So I'll have to use my fingers. But that's okay. I'm okay with that. She seems like she's pretty level. Try my best not to let the, the my fingers influence the plane any. So I like that. Okay. All right. So the factory setting CG 80 to 90 millimeters back from the leading edge seems to be spot on. We have verified that everything is the right uh, direction. We have gone over how to set up. Uh, remember the S bus? You just you plug it into an open controllable channel. You don't use a six channel receiver. You won't need a retract or a gear channel. So use that. Assign it to aux two or whatever open port, and make it where it's controllable. Assign it to a switch like B. I like a three position switch, and then you can then use all three levels of the gyro. Um, uh, set my throttle cut to H, which works. Went over, I'm choosing 70% throws over 30% expo for low rates and 100% throws over 30% expo for high rates. Um, I'll, I'll set my timer for five minutes. I'll do my audio prompts is a totally different thing. You can, there's about a dozen different audio uh, videos on, on how to do that. Um, I'll do that at the field. And, uh, but all I'm going to do is just, you know, motor on, prop secured, flaps up, flaps down, landing flaps, takeoff flaps. Um, gyro on, gyro off, you know, those audio prompts. I'll do that. And I'll set my timer for five minutes for the first flight. Um, like I say, she runs on 6S. Uh, 3300 is what it calls for. Up to, you could probably fit a 4000 there, but just remember the bigger the battery, the further back you go. And you've got your CG marks now, so you know how to set it. Well, there you go, folks. That is the Husky Ultimate. That's how you set up the radio. I can't, I'm sure I'm leaving stuff out, but... I mean, okay, we went over throttle cut, we went over flaps, we went over rates, we went over how to where to mount your receiver, we went over how to set up the the, the vector gyro system, and we went over CG, and we went over uh, how to tell if your control surfaces are perfectly neutral and trim. So I can't think of much else to talk about. Um, Y'all have a good day. Thank you for watching. Big shout out again to Hobby Zone for sending this ultimate out to me for review. I thank you for watching. God bless y'all. And don't forget, faith, family, and friends, and Huskies. Bye-bye. Real quick, something I realized I forgot to cover, and that was that zip tie mod. Now, the way this hatch fits on there, it fits on there pretty tight. And when you release the latch, it doesn't just pop up. you got to grab it with both sides of your hands. And eventually, your gonna, you're gonna, nails are going to eat that up. Okay, gonna eat up your paint. So what I did was I took a screwdriver and you see there's a put a little hole right there. I poked that through or that then it came out right here on the very edge. So what I want to do, I'm gonna take a long zip tie, I'm gonna run the zip tie through itself, just like it like it is to make that big that knuckle there, right? Make that something that doesn't want to pass through that hole. I'm gonna take the end of the zip tie, and I'm going to shove that zip tie up and feed it through that hole I just made and see that knuckle hold it in place okay now and then I made that little indentation there to where that's going to sit flat 
and will not in any way interfere with inter the interruption of the battery hatch. But before I do that, before I do that permanently, I like to take a little bit of glue, a little bit of this cheap Chinese glue that you get with all these kits. And I want a little bit on that zip tie there. Okay. And that will help secure that in place. And I put a little on that indentation that I, that I made to keep that zip tie nice and in, in place. Okay. And then I've got it tight up in there. Now I'm not going to leave that long, long thing hanging. So I just figure about maybe, and it looks like an antenna anyways, I figure about maybe an inch or two, just enough for me to grab, okay? Now I've got this, an, this uh, zip tie there, it's in place, put that there, doesn't interfere with the operation of the battery hatch in any way, I hit the release, grab that zip tie, and I can pull my hatch off without having to touch my uh, paint or chip anything up with my nails. Now the other thing I didn't cover is the ESC. The ESC was not calibrated, but it's extremely simple to do. All right, you go ahead and turn your transmitter on. Okay, keep the prop. You're gonna have to have the motor on. I don't. I'm not gonna take the motor prop back off, but okay. Keep the prop away from you. Make sure your transmitter's on. Take your throttle on your transmitter. Make sure your motor is in the on position on your throttle cover where it would, would come on. Put your throttle all the way maximum. And then carefully keep your stuff away from the prop. Like I say, normally you do this with a prop off inside the shop, but I, already, I forgot to do this. Okay. Plug in the transmitter. Plug in your battery to your, make your, your, your plane hot, okay? Wait, let it go through its little dance, and then pull down on the throttle. Here are the six counts. Okay, as soon as you see it do a little dance, pull down that throttle, and now you've got immediate throttle response. There we go. That's what you want. That's all there is to it. Put the throttle, unplug your battery, make sure your transmitter is on, put your throttle cut off to where the motor would run, put your throttle all the way at full throttle, plug in your plane, wait for the wings to dance, and then pull down on that throttle. And that will, and then you'll, then you'll and then if you hear the, the six beats, in other words, it's counting how many cells, you know you've got to calibrate because you have, should have immediate throttle response. Now there are other things you can go through after that dance and wait and hear different sounds and tones, but you'd have to have the graph that shows you what each one of them means because you can do a, a cell count, you can do a, a cool, a slow start, a fast start, there's all kinds of options you can do. I just want immediate thrust as soon as I hit the throttle, okay? I don't want, uh, you know, I don't want to have to spool up slowly or anything like that. You can do that for scale stuff, but that's going to be in your programming uh, part of the ESC and that doesn't come with instructions. So. I'm not going into that. <laughs> well, there you go. I just forgot to add that. So, you know, I get out of the video. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I didn't add that. So we'll put that in there. Thank you for watching. God bless y'all. Don't forget, faith, family, and friends. And thank you, Hobby Zone, for this plane. <laughs>